What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here, moving on to the next example in the exponential functions unit test for grade 11 functions. We have a bunch of these exponential expressions to simplify, and we have to make sure that our final answer is going to contain only positive exponents. So, as usual, what I recommend doing, pause the video, try the question yourself, try to go through the process, and then compare your final answer to mine, and then do these one at a time. So don't do all three of them at once. Try part A first, then check that, then do part P, check that, just in case there's any mistakes you're making, and so they don't carry over to the next example. So starting with this first one, we got negative four x squared y squared, all of that is to the power of three. We got negative two x and then negative four, and then y, this y here, there's like a power of one, and all of that is gonna be to the power of two. Now, first thing I'm thinking, and by the way, there's different ways to do this. So you might go about this in a different way than I will. A lot of times there's different routes you could take in simplifying these. Just make sure that the final answer you get is gonna be the same as mine. But personally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these exponents on the outside of the brackets and I'm going to distribute them because if you remember, whenever you're multiplying things within a bracket and you have an exponent on the outside, you could take each of those things to that same exponent, right? You wanna make sure that each of those is gonna be in brackets in case there's any negatives floating around like this negative four. So we would write negative four to the power of three, like that. We would have x squared to the power of three, y squared to the power of three, and over here, we would have negative 2 to the power of 2, uh, x to the negative 4 to the power of 2, and then we got y to the power of 1 to the power of 2, like that. Now, negative 4 to the power of 3, that's going to give us what? Negative 64. These, you multiply, so that'd be x to the 6, y to the 6, negative 2 to the power of 2, that gives us positive 4. This would be x to the negative 8. And then uh, y to the power of 2. And you know what? Just to keep it consistent, I'm not going to put the brackets around the variables. We'll have it like that. Okay, and then from here, what I will do, the negative 64 and the 4, let's just multiply those right away. That's going to give us negative 256. And then uh, x, to the or, uh, x to the 6, x to the negative 8. Let's... Um, you know what, let's just simplify those right away. So that's going to be like x to the 6 plus negative 8, right? We would add those exponents, which would be like x to the 6 minus 8, which would give us x to the negative 2. So this and this would simplify x to the negative 2. Another thing you could have done is brought the negative 8 down to the denominator and then simplify the x to the 6 over x to the 8 after but uh, I'm just gonna simplify them right here. We'll have this negative exponent, which we'll take care of in the next line. And then we got y to the six, y to the two, add those exponents, that's gonna be y to the eight. And then, as I just mentioned, you can't have negative exponents, right? Our final answer has to have only positive exponents. So this x to the negative two, I'm gonna bring down, so we would have negative 256, y to the eight over x to the power of positive two. And that ends up being the final answer. There's not much else that we can simplify here. Yo, yo, what's up? Quick little intermission here. Wanted to mention a few things quickly and we'll get right back into the question. First off, if you are getting value from this video, if you can please like the video and subscribe to my channel, it does help me out a lot. Number two, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there is a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com, where all my courses are organized so you can watch the videos in order and I'd recommend doing so because lots of concepts carry over from one video to the next. Also, for lots of the courses, at the end of the chapters, you can find tests that you can practice with, and the tests have video solutions as well. Number three, if you feel like you need personalized help in tutoring, give me a shout. I currently tutor students seven days a week over Zoom, both high school and university students, one-on-one -on -one and in groups. You can text me 
we can discuss availability and then we can book a session. My contact details are on my website. And lastly, feel free to forward the website to any of your friends who are also taking the course, who you feel can benefit from these videos as well. Hit me up on all my socials. It's all things mathematics for all of them. Back to the video, we go. Now moving on to this next one, we got negative three, a to the negative two, b to the three. That's all in brackets to the power of negative two in the numerator. And then we got 100 a to the 4 b to the negative 3. So again, different ways that you can go about this. So if I'm going to do it in a different way than you did it, don't worry about the process. But if the final answer is going to be different, then you got to go back and check your steps. Okay, but there is different ways we could do this. Now, I have this negative 2 here, so I can distribute it and make like negative 3 to the negative 2, and then a to the negative 2 to the negative 2, b to the 3. But then there's going to be just a bunch of negative exponents and then just a lot of algebra we could do there. So I'm actually just going to take all of this and bring it down to the denominator first to make this negative 2 a positive. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this b to the negative 3 and I'm going to bring up to the numerator to make that a positive exponent, okay? So our next line is basically going to be b to the three. If I bring this b to the negative three up, that's gonna turn into a positive exponent. And then I'll have negative, actually, you know what? I'll write the 100 a to the four. That stays down there. And then we got negative three a to the negative two, b to the three to the positive two, like that. Again, you don't have to do this. You can distribute that negative two in the numerator but then uh, just be careful with the signs when you're doing that and then you're gonna have to switch a bunch of things over because you're gonna have a bunch of negative exponents to work with. Versus here, what I'll have is I'll have, okay, b to the three, let's do this very carefully, we'll have 100 a to the four. Now this negative three, that's gonna be squared. We'll have a to the negative two, that's gonna be squared. Then we'll have b to the three, that's gonna be squared like that. So we would have b to the three over 100 a to the four. Now negative three squared, that's just nine. Then we'll have a to the negative four here, right? Negative two times two is a to the negative four. And then we'll have b to the six, like that. Okay, so let's continue this up here. So. What's the uh, next step? Now, see this a to the negative four? I'm gonna bring that up and turn it to a positive. So I'll have a to the four, b to the three, all over. Now the 100 and the nine, I'm actually just gonna uh, multiply those. So we'll have 900, then we'll have a to the four, b to the six. Uh, give me a sec, yeah, all right. I think I'm correct here. Now notice the a to the fours, those are just gonna cancel. Or you could think about it like, um, it would be a to the four minus four, right? If we subtract these because they're dividing, then it'll be a to the power zero, which is just one. But if you see the same terms like this, you could just cancel them out. You could have also simplified them in the denominator here, adding them, you'd have a to the power zero, which is just one. But whenever I see negative exponents within a fraction, I like to just switch them and then usually simplify after, right? So the a's go away. So there's actually not going to be any a's in the final answer. Now notice we got b to the three over b to the six. So it's like there are three b's up top and we got six of them at the bottom. So if we cancel stuff out, what are we going to be left with? Well, we would be left with three of them in the bottom. Right, so we would end up with a b to the three in the bottom. Another way to think about it, you could do b to the three minus six, which is b to the negative three, which you would bring down to the denominator. Right, so whichever way you think about it, there's going to be three b's left in the denominator. The 900 is still there, and then we have a one left up top. And then I don't think we could simplify that any further, so that ends up being the final answer for part. And then moving on to part C, we got the fifth root of this entire expression, 1024 x to the negative eight to the power of five, all over two x to the negative three to the power of negative five. Now, here, whenever I see any 
roots, I like to change them to rational exponents. So basically, instead of having the fifth root of all of this, it's basically going to be all of that to the power of 1 over 5, like that. Okay, and so let's simplify uh, this down here now. Uh, let's think. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, let's do this in steps. So we'll have x to the negative 40. And I'm actually not going to do anything with the denominator yet. I don't want to do too much here so you could clearly see all my steps. All I did so far was multiply the negative 8 and the 5 to get negative 40 right here. So then from here, what I will do, notice I got a negative exponent on the x, so I'm going to bring the x down to the denominator, and then I have a negative 5 exponent on this entire expression, so I'm going to bring that entire expression up to the numerator. So our next line would be 1024, 2x to the negative 3, to the power of 5, all over x to the 40, and then remember, we still got that 1 over 5 on the outside. Now again, different ways to do this. You could have uh, distributed the negative 5 to the 2 and the x to the negative 3 in the denominator, and then simplify from there, and then with those separate exponential expressions, any negative exponents you could then bring up, I decided to just bring that up initially and then change it to a positive 5. Okay, but again, you don't have to do it this way. Just make sure that whatever way you do it, you're getting the same answer in the end. So continuing this up here, uh, what are we going to do now? Okay, so the 1024, that's going to stay. Now, I'm going to take the 5, distribute it, so I'll have 2 to the power of 5. And then I'll have x to the net or uh, x to the negative three to the power of five, like that. And that's going to be all over x to the forty. Okay, and then that's going to be to the power of one over five, like that. So then, what's going to happen is you'll have one thousand and twenty-four thirty-two, right? Two to the power of five is thirty-two. And then you'll have x to the negative eight. Sorry, see, you got to be careful. X to the negative 15, right? You got to multiply those exponents all over X to the 40. See, even me, I almost slipped up right there. You got to be super careful with every step. Okay, so now what's going to happen, 1,024 times 32, that's going to be 32,768. And then what I'm going to do is this x to the negative 15, I'm going to bring down. So we'll have x to the power of positive 15, x to the 40. That's going to be all to the power of 1 over 5. So we'll have 32, 7, 6, 8 over x to the power of 55, all to the power of 1 over 5. So then, let me continue this on the side here. We'll have 32, 7, 6, 8 to the power of 1 over 5 over x to the power of 55 to the power of 1 over 5. Another thing you could have done at the beginning was just distributed that 1 over 5 into the bracket immediately. Um, but again, I prefer to simplify these big brackets and then distribute the outside exponent after. Okay, so 32, 7, 6, 8 to the power of 1 over 5 or the fifth root of that number. That's just going to give you 8. And then 55 times 1 over 5 that's just going to give you 11. So 8 over x to the power of 11, that is the final answer. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.